Good morning. Our Old, Old Testament reading is Genesis 1, 1 to 5. Genesis 1, 1 to 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let, be, let there be a light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. We're we'll reading a New Testament reading, John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. Thank you. Our last New Testament reading is in 1st John chapter 1, 1 through 12. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify of it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet, walk in the darkness, we, we lie and we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all, all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we, have, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. Good morning. You're a good looking bunch. I love the miracle that happens between 10 0 something and 11 o'clock. We're glad you're here. A special welcome to those that are able to join us in person and those who may be joining us via the web. May we be blessed as we go to God's Word this morning. Have you ever been in total darkness? It happened to me while I was driving on the plains of eastern Colorado one evening. 
driving home in my faithful diesel car, all of a sudden there was an electrical problem. 75 miles an hour down the two-lane highway, everything inside the car and outside the car went dark. Fortunately, the engine continued, but I couldn't see a thing. I let my foot off the accelerator and coasted along, and there was just enough moonlight out, I could barely make out the middle line down the highway and occasionally catch the silhouette of a fence post. And there's an old saying, keep it between the fence posts. As long as I could see one, I knew I was somewhat safe in relation to at least one set of fence posts. The short in the electrical wiring would bounce in and out just enough that I could make my way down the road. Instant darkness, disorientation, you cannot see and you need guidance immediately. For physical safety, you do. What about darkness of soul? Are there ever any times in your life where you're moving down the highway of life and you're so close to the Lord, you have life figured out. Life is a joy. You're on top of it. And all of a sudden, something goes awry. And there's darkness, darkness of soul that creeps in gradually or overtakes you. It happens sometimes imperceptibly, slowly, or speedily. Last January, I unintentionally experienced it. I got a phone call that said, uh, Rick, you better come. Mom's in the hospital. Booked the ticket. Mom was indeed in the hospital. Had been there for about six days. They had uh, kept her comfortable with uh, some very strong medication. And on about day five or six, she came to. I had been there for a day and a half. Uh, she wasn't quite herself in the grogginess of uh, painkillers, etc. Spent the next 20 days there. I don't remember where. I kind of lost touch in time. But I just said, oh, Lord, you know, I'm kind of kind of tired of this. Her being in the hospital, me being gone. Uh, it's kind of weighing on me. Um, you just stay close to me. I'm depending on you like a good friend to draw close to me. But I'm not sure exactly where all this is going. Have you been there, friends, in times and transitions in your life? If you haven't been, you may be at some time in the future. If you have been, this message you may resonate with. It was somewhere around day 20 or 21 that I realized, you know, I'd like a little light through this dark hour of my life. As the plane took off and mom was released to go to extended care, it was somewhere taxiing down the runway. Um, that the spirit said, she's gonna be all right. And I just felt a soul relief set in. God is there with you even in your darkest hour, the darkest night of your soul, friends. If you forget everything else, be assured that He will not leave you in your hour of need. Do you believe that? More than my word, I'd like to share from the Word of God that assurance today. We have a darkness, not only individual darkness that we are living in, but we have some national darkness and world darkness. So I'm just going to set the stage for our message that we move from a personal darkness into a corporate darkness, a national darkness, and a darkness that's worldwide. It was 14 years ago, September 11th, 
the 19 terrorists overtook four flights that were journeying, started out on the East Coast heading to Los Angeles. It was 14 years ago that I was in this church. 14 years ago in one day. I had awakened in the morning. Perhaps you heard about it while you were at work. Now, if you're under 20 years ago, uh, 20 years old, you won't remember much of this experience. But those that do remember can will remember with horror as they played over and over and over again. Those two planes going in to the uh, Twin Towers and with horror watching them collapse before your eyes. The plane that went into the Pentagon, destroying the Pentagon or parts of it. The plane that was heading to the Capitol as passengers rushed the crew, the hijackers drove it into the ground. 2,997 people perished that day. Darkness, darkness, the evil one, had his hand and his day in our nation. Darkness has a way of envel enveloping our individual lives, our corporate life, our national life. Things have not gotten much better sometimes on a national level. You look on the world level, our history is filled with darkness. Darkness, Ethnic cleansing on the world level. Six and a quarter million people, 1940, Adolf Hitler lost their lives because evil prevailed for a short time. Darkness, darkness comes upon the world stage. I'm so glad, friends, that God reigns he doesn't leave our world to the evil one and dark powers to prevail. If you have your Bibles, open them with me today. John says, open them to the uh, Gospel of John. John chapter 1, we'll get there in just a minute. And as you're looking up that verse, John chapter 3 verse 18 says, Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Then this is the message we have heard and declare unto you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. No darkness in Christ. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are deeds of evil. John chapter 1, uh, 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 says, Then this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. In him there is no darkness darkness at all. In John chapter 1, we find there that, the, uh, that John is writing and penning these words around 100 AD. And he's writing to two groups of people. He's writing to the Jews of his day, and he's writing to the Greeks of his day. And John appeals, uh, I'm going to set the overall arch. He goes backwards in time to make his appeal based on beginnings. And he goes forward in time as he pens our uh, opening scripture in today's worship uh, in Revelation. He goes forward in time that Christ is the light and in him we find our hope. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. So John is writing. He's writing towards the end of his life. And he's penning the words that would cause the Jews to realize that Jesus... Although they believed he was a good teacher, they did not believe that he was, uh, he was God incarnate. John was attempting to show the Jews that Jesus is, Jesus was, Jesus is, and Jesus will always be God. He reached back and linked Jesus to the creation story. Nothing that was made was made except by Jesus. What an amazing feat that Jesus, as John writes, he could write about anything as he started his gospel, the good news 
is Jesus, friends. The good news that darkness is vanished when Jesus comes into the picture. Now we have to go back. We have to go back to the beginning of creation. This will all... This will all follow a natural thread in just a few moments. We're going from creation in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, you can turn in your Bibles as we, uh, as we go there. Genesis chapter 1, the story of creation. John links his message to the uh, story of creation in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, it was good, and divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were what? The first day. By, it's an interesting link here, because as we start the creation story, the only thing that's out there is what? Darkness. Just darkness, the Bible says. And if you were to look in the original language, it says ex nihilo, out of nothing, out of nothing, out of darkness, God speaks. And all he does is speak, and he speaks light into, the, into existence. Oh, wouldn't it have been something to be there? All right, we have darkness. All right, we have light. And all of a sudden, light appears across the universe. Amazing, incredible, isn't it? Into darkness, when God speaks, things happen. Things are created. Things change. Now, some people say, well, exa how exactly did we get here? Well, some people believe it was just a matter of progressive evolution. You, uh, you somehow, there was a, a big bang, a little bang, and uh, this slew of chemicals got together with that slew of chemicals, and there was some kind of life that moved to this kind of life. And where are you going in the evolutionary chain? Uh, you begin as monkeys and you're going to end up as something. Doesn't quite make a lot of sense in light of what the scripture says. You were created and designed by God for a purpose. I like to, you know, people like to say, do you have any proof of uh, creation and all this kind of stuff? I'm not a trained scientist, but let me see if I can help you out. Hold your hand up just for a minute. Just hold your hand up. Anytime you wonder if you were created, just take a look at your hand. Now follow along with me. Close your hand. Close your eyes. Open your hand. Look at your hand. Now, <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a skilled scientist. But I don't believe that the eyes are connected to by hand by accident. I don't believe that the complexity of your hand just evolved over time. I don't believe the complexity of the human system, the body, the lungs, the heart, all working together, the mind controlling everything, uh, that it just happened by accident. I believe there was, a, there was a God and a designer. Do you believe that, friends? But what I find interesting as John is opening his book, is he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and nothing that was created was created except by the Word, by Jesus himself. What I find interesting is God could have just created everything at once. But what he wanted us to know is out of darkness, when he speaks, light comes forward. And let me suggest to you, in your hour of darkness, the Spirit of God is with you. When you have night, the night of your soul and your greatest struggle in life, the Spirit of God has not left you. 
The Spirit of God is with you. And when He speaks His Spirit into your life, there will be light for your soul. Do you believe that, friends? You may forget everything I say, but cling to the Word of God with authority. I'm telling you today, Christ will not leave you. It is in finding the meaning of creation in this context in setting that we find purpose of life. In Genesis, uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, we find him creating not only light, we find him creating everything that is in the world. And we find him creating Adam and Eve. We find him creating you in a future sense with all of your uniqueness, all of your character, the good things in your character, and even some of those foibles that uh, other people wonder about where they came from. You are so unique and so valuable to God that He died on the cross for you. Let no one, no one displace or devalue you in the eyes of God. Did you hear me clearly, friends? Christ created you for purpose. And when in your hour and darkness of the soul you wonder, of what value am I? It is then that the Spirit of God will say, I created you because I love you. You are to reach somebody else. Share the message of love for them, a word of encouragement. So we find a linking between John, uh, John's opening, and we find the linking with creation. There's an interesting piece that John uses here. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The, the translation for Word, we know in the Greek, is logos, which is translated Word in English. In the Greek mind, there was a secondary translation to that, and the Greeks understood that word, logos, to be the mind of Christ or reason. I kind of like that. Some of you are scientists and wired more linear in a linear fashion. Some of you just like to float from one moment to the next. You know, how do I feel about this? That depends uh, how I'll navigate my life and Christian experience. But in the Greek, uh, the Greeks would understand this logos to be the mind of Christ, the reasoning of Christ. I like that because Christ is there with you. He's reasoning with you, understanding Christ's wishes for your, for your life. God, God speaks. You can never gather up darkness by running around and gathering up all, all of the concerns of darkness as if to stuff it into a basket and ship it off. All that remains when you try to do that is more darkness. The way to have darkness flee is to light a little light, a candle, 10 miles away can be seen by the naked eye. Just a little light. Bring the light of Christ into your life. Open your life to Him. God creates, and when He creates, He brings light. And when light comes, hope comes, healing comes, healthiness comes, meaning comes, and purpose comes. Do you believe that, friends? I believe it because the Scripture says it. The dark night of the soul gives way to hope as we come to our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at 1 John. 1 John, just for a few minutes. 1 John, verse 1. Because here we have a picture of Jesus, the light of the world, a very tactile picture of Jesus. That which was from the beginning, John writes, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, which our hands have handled of the word of life. They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. They touched him. They conversed with him. For the life was made manifest, was manifested, and we have seen it, and we bear witness to it, and we show it unto you, that eternal life which was with the Father, which was manifest unto us, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that you might also have fellowship with us, 
And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. If we are going to experience the fullness of the life, we must have fellowship with him. And all these things we write unto you, I like this part, that your joy might be what? Full. I like that. If I have to go through life, I want to go through life full of joy. I love it when God works in my life. I love it because I like to tell people about it. Ask me what God has done. You better have a few minutes or longer. <laughs> but you can say, preacher, give me the 30-second version, please. That your joy might be full. If you want to have more joy in your life, just turn and look to Jesus. Put your hand in His hand. Put your arm metaphorically around His. Embrace Him. Let Him envelop you. And you'll experience the joy that's talked about in John here. This is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you that God is light and in Him is what? No darkness at all. I like that. I like that. I like that. Because when I find myself in a dark space, that verse comes to me immediately. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Everything looks so bleak, everything looks so dark. I'm not where God wants me to be. I'm just not where God wants me to be. And if I'm not where God wants me to be, if this is darkness, I'm going to turn around and move in the opposite direction. Whatever is taking me down the road of darkness, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to walk in the opposite direction. If it's friends that are bringing me down, I'm going to turn around and find other friends. If it's habits that I'm doing, I'm going to turn around from the darkness and I'm going to walk towards the light. If it's thought patterns that continually drag me down, oh, I'm a sinner and I'm no good, I'm worthless. I am worse than the scum on the bottom of a snake. I'm going to turn around and look to Christ and see Him dying on the cross for me. I like it. In Him is what? No darkness. And if I'm in darkness, I'm going to turn around and move to the light, Christ. And as He comes into my life, things change just like that. Do you like that promise? If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. And if we say we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We, we friends, are Christ's when we yield our lives to him. Listen to what Isaiah says. I'll give you the reference, write it down, you can look it up this afternoon. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 5 and 6. Verse 6 says, uh, verse 5 says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the flesh shall see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And the voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all goodliness thereof is as a flower of the field. Isaiah 49, 3 says, And he said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. That last piece, you, you are the people of God, he's proclaiming in Isaiah, in whom I will be, what's the verb there? Glorified. That's an interesting word we're going to unpack and explore in the next few weeks as we work our way through John. As we look as a series in John, it's John that will bring us into a closer relationship with Christ. It's John that will make us better people. It's John that will improve our living. So I want to invite you, friends, if this is the first time you're here, mark down in your day planner 
to be here next week, same time, same place, okay? If it's your habit, keep up the good habits and be here next week. So we find that what brings me hope, what brings me hope is the Word of God. That we're not wandering aimlessly through life, that we need to look at some self-help book, that we need to look at uh, what is the best philosophy of life. We have it in the Word of God. We have it by His promise. We have it by His proclamation that His people that are called by His name are called for a purpose, are called to glorify Him. Do you? We started with the question, have you ever been in darkness? We're going to open up another question that we'll address. Do you know how to glorify God? Do you know what it means to glorify God? You see, you're not here by accident. You weren't created just for your occupation. You weren't created just to be a father, just to be a mother, as important as that is, just to be a good child, just to be an ordinary child. You weren't created just to take up time and space. You were created for the glory of God. You were created in His image, by His design, with His purpose. His purpose was to glorify the Father, and your purpose is that also. We will unpack that. But let's move forward for just a minute. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3 says, O Jerusalem, let your light shine to all. For the Lord, Lord, the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as the night covers all nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Powerful, 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 isn't it? If I read this right, there is coming a day, not braggadociously at all, friends. This is a promise of God. Isaiah chapter 60. Uh, pardon me, Isaiah, yes, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. He says, there's coming a day when the leaders of the nation, the kings of the world, will come and look upon the people in God and say, I'd like what you have. And we humbly tell them about our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Now let me start. If there's coming a day, and it's some day in the future, might be months, might be years, might be weeks, might be tomorrow, I have no idea. But if it's a promise of God that that's going to happen, I'm one who likes expediency. If it's good two years from now, it's even better today. What do you think? If it's good two months from now, it's even better today. So I have to ask you the question. How's it working, friends? How's it working with the Spirit of God in your life and the testimony that you share with others? Are they drawn to the light of our Lord Jesus Christ as you shared with them what Jesus has done in your life? That is bringing glory to the Father. I take the arch of the beginning of the Gospel of John and extend it to his writings for our call to worship in Revelation chapter 4, the overall arch from beginning to end. In the beginning there was darkness and there was light. In the end, John the Revelator, same writer, says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. What an amazing story. One that you know so well. Created in the beginning and in the end. The ark of bringing glory to God. The purpose for which we were created. As God brings His light into your life. As God pours out His Spirit into your life. You go forward as a people to carry that light into the world. May we be faithful 
as we do so. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, it's an awesome thing when we reflect on our lives to realize that you have been you have invited us by your holy spirit to be your sons and daughters you have called us out of darkness darkness of the soul dark lives without you by filling us with your spirit and giving us light. Father, we're not always faithful in that walk, but we would pray just now, Lord, that you would forgive us, that we would be determined to have your word, your light living in us, that we might share that light with each person that we come in contact with. Father, fill our lives that we will live for your honor and glory. We ask through Christ's precious name. Amen.